Coming to Amazon Prime Video tomorrow on July 23rd comes a spiritual successor to Crank, it looks like, but it stars Kate Beckinsale, who I've been missing a lot in my movies. This is my review of Jolt. We follow a woman with a slightly murderous anger management problem that she controls with the help of an electrode lined vest that she uses to shock herself back to normalcy whenever she gets homicidal. But after the first guy she's ever fallen for is murdered, she goes on a revenge fueled rampage while the cops pursue her as the prime suspect. Before I start with my review, I want to know your thoughts on Jolt, if you're excited for it, if you've happened to see it somewhere, somehow, let me know know all of that in the comments below. What is your favorite movie starring Kate Beckinsale, action movie in particular? Let me know all of that in the comments below. Start the conversation, it's the most important part as always. And while you're down there, if you're new to the channel, first of all, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Consider subscribing to the channel, it does wonders to get the content out there and you'll always be aware of whenever I upload more great content. As alluded in the intro to this video, I love Kate Beckinsale. She's a badass, she's an incredible actress, and she's awesome here, playing this very interesting character with these violent impulses that she has and that she attacks bad people with. The premise includes that she only ever attacks bad people. She only goes after people who are being assholes or disrespectful. Basically, the Karens of the world, she goes after them, she gives them the business and she puts them in their place and it's awesome. She's believable in the action. The action is actually shot quite nicely. It's filled with these moments of bursting adrenaline and she's very proactive. Once she sets out on this revenge quest, she's relentless. She doesn't stop and it's incredibly entertaining to see her going on this violent rampage because violence is always fun, especially when it's shot well. But she also has a dimension to her. This was the first person she ever trusted. This was the first person that kind of knew her secret that she got intimate with. And once she opened herself up, she paid for it, inadvertently, of course. So on a premise and character basis, this is a really interesting journey that this character goes on of finding out what happened and getting some revenge for her own, because it's actually the first time in her life she's actually being guided by true emotion. There is something that drives her for this. And for someone that is basically acting throughout her life on impulses, seeing a driving force this strong and seeing her commit to this is extremely refreshing to watch. And seeing a character like this committing to something and allowing an emotion, a true emotion, to Driver is extremely interesting and entertaining. I also thought the film was shot in general very well. There's a neon drenching on most of the look of this film that looks real good. I'm always a fan of neon drenching your film throughout and the use of color and lighting in this one is really good. The film is also really funny, especially when it comes to the relationship of our main character and the doctor that takes care of her, that puts on the vest, that takes care of the electrodes and how they're working, how they're not working. There's a really interesting relationship. He's always afraid of her whenever she comes in bursting through the office. He's played by Stanley Tucci, by the way. They're really great together, some really good chemistry there. And unfortunately, as far as the story and the directions it takes, this film could have been a lot better. There is a fulfillment of the premise, so in that regard, the film does fill out the requirements it needs to, and it's satisfying enough, I guess. I just thought the film had a few missed opportunities. The police chasing her land to some comedic moments, played by Bobby Cannavale and Laverne Cox, but they are never really a true threat. You never believe they're actually going to catch her. You never believe that even if they do catch her, she can't escape and she won't kick their asses. I also think a certain reveal was very predictable from the beginning. I never doubted in my mind what was going to happen and I think that predictability hurts the film because it also takes away from what the character is doing. Not to mention the final scene of the film is horrid. I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not spoiling anything by saying the final scene is horrid but it completely takes away from the rest of the film because the easy situation is right there. And when you have no reason story-wise for 
this thing to not have happened during the film, for the film to not have stopped earlier and everything been fixed, it just takes away from the journey itself, from the journey of the character, from the journey you went on while watching this film. Jolt offers more of an escape per se. It's a well shot film with really good performances and some really entertaining action, but the story structure and how they decided to close it out just doesn't add up. It's completely unsatisfying and leaves a sour taste in your mouth, unfortunately. I'm giving Jolt a C+. And so those are my thoughts on Jolt. Let me know if you enjoyed it more than I did, whether you're watching this tomorrow or any time in the future. Throw all your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, you are the best. I'll be back very soon with reviews for 9 Days, Snake Eyes, Old, and all sorts of great stuff. And I hope to see you in those. So if you've watched the video this far, again, consider clicking the subscribe if you haven't yet. Because if you're still watching, you enjoyed it on some level, right? Thank you so much for the third time, because I can never thank you enough. And so until the next one love each other, and love the movies.